brothers and sisters, this is the Remnant Warrior from Kingdom Productions Network. I wanted to thank you all for watching this video and all Kingdom Productions Network content and ask that you please hit the like button because it truly helps the channel grow and new people see the content. And if you aren't already subscribed, please consider hitting the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you'll know each time we upload new content. Grace and peace. As I'm sure you all can see, I have got a guest on with me tonight. Uh, Gabriel Riveros is on with me, and he is going to uh, be talking about this very important issue of demonic oppression and the spirit of fear and the life of a believer because believe it or not this thing is real and it's something that a lot of us have faced and if you haven't you very well could uh, you know it, it's not something that anybody is uh impervious to let's see what in the world is the problem here Gabriel, it has you muted. Um, I can you hear me, Joe? Yeah, I can hear you now. All right. Uh, just, um, I guess, if you want, just tell everybody a little about yourself, who you are, and uh, then we'll get started. Sure. Good evening, brothers and sisters. My name is Gabriel Riveros. I am a born again Christian. Uh, going on, actually, this month, June is going to be my seven year anniversary. It was the end of June 2014 when awesome. I was born again. I had received uh, Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Uh, three months before, around the end of March 2014. Uh, raised Catholic, rejected that faith as a young uh, preteen, and then just kind of wandered into a lot of dark stuff after that. <laughs> wandered into the world. I was a very curious uh, child. And, um, you know, Jeremy, we talked about this earlier that um, the Lord turns everything the enemy intended for good. And I really think that um, one thing I found in common with, with pretty much any believer effort that have been walking this walk of faith for more than, more than a minute is um, we've all had stuff we've gone through. We've all had trials. We've all had tribulations and sufferings and challenges we had to overcome. And all of that, um, I believe, leads the believer to just be more equipped to be used as those instruments of gold that we're, we're to strive for, you know. So currently I am, the Lord has me walking into a ministry of street evangelism, street preaching. That's that didn't. Awesome. And so that had been on my heart for about the last two and a half years. Uh, before that, I've been involved in all sorts of different ministries. Uh, when I was very involved with churches, um, from worship teams to spiritual warfare related stuff, healing ministries, uh, prayer groups, obviously, and all, all the things that the body of Christ should be doing when they assemble together. Um, but the Lord kind of took me out of that into the wilderness, so to speak. And I didn't, I didn't understand why he was doing that. Uh, this would have been October 2016. So I, I was very involved. Uh, in the church I was going to, but the Lord took me out, <clears throat> and he He led me kind of in an Ezekiel 8 um, walk for a while, where I went to different churches, and I didn't understand why, you know, I was just being obedient to, to, to the Lord, and he's kind of showing me, after a lot of frustration and prayer and patience on my part, just ask them, you know, you tell me, I don't, I don't understand why this is happening, Lord, uh, you know, it's a very unsettling feeling to, to be comfortable, right, in a community, and then taken out. Um, I had just gotten there, married, you know, I figured, well, maybe he wants me to focus on that because, you know, that's marriage is a ministry. If you're married, that's, that should be one of your first ministries, right? Uh, cause from there, you know, from there comes everything else from there comes, you know, you can't be in any, any sort of position in a church unless you got your own, uh, marriage and family, uh, in order, although I should say the Lord has got that in order for you. So, um, but. So to sum it up, uh, this last year has been a, a year, a lot of repentance on my part individually. And it's repenting of things that if you had asked me um, February, March of 2020, I would have no idea what you were talking about. You know, so it's, it's this never ending um, content, contending that we're doing. Paul talked about contending for the prize, right? And this last year, uh, it, it took us, uh, personally, it took, took my marriage to a point of on the brink of almost ending. Uh, it took me to a very dark place um, that I never thought I'd be in, you know, certainly not as a believer. 
uh, of wanting to take my own life on New Year's of 2019 and 2020. Um, and also being very aware, very sensitive to the uh, demonic presence that was trying to gain access and break something up that um, I just had, we just had to endure and overcome in faith and in, in Christ and let him do the, do the work. So that was the biggest thing. The last thing I said, let him do the work. And that sounds kind of strange for most people because we, we, you know, most people don't like that. They want to, they want to be the ones that do the work. Right. Uh, so I had to really, I had to really just learn to just be like, you know, here I am. <laughs> I, I got, I got nothing. <laughs> you do it. You do it, Christ. You know, nothing's impossible for you. Here I am. You tell me what to do and I'll do it. And that's, that's been the last year. And I gotta tell you, uh, it wasn't fun going through it, but I understand now on the other side, why he was doing it. He was doing it to train me up to be able to be one of his laborers in the field. Uh, so we all have to go through that. If you're going through that right now, don't think it's strange. Um, it's part of the course. If you're going to be a real Christian. Absolutely. And um, just, you know, so everybody knows what I was referring to earlier about me and why I haven't been here the past few weeks. Um, really, um, I, well, everybody knows that it's hurt my testimony that I uh, struggled with severe anxiety and uh, panic attack when I was growing up all the way to my early 20s. And um, then they just kind of dissipated and stopped eventually. And I, I didn't have to deal with them anymore, uh, you know, for well over 10 years. And then last year, during 2020, when uh, it, the country was shut down, all the churches were shut down, and we were still having services. And also, I was uh, in the middle of writing the Origins of Evil series, um, you know, I started coming under a severe uh, spiritual attack. And not just me, but my entire family, um, you know, uh, people who have been watching for a while, you know, I'm sure you remember that. And um, a lot of people were praying for us. Um, we uh, were having cars break down left and right. Uh, you know, I had family members getting sick constantly. I had you know, every, it seemed like every other week I had some sort of uh, virus or something. And uh, then I got in the, that really bad motorcycle accident uh, at the end of June, uh, almost a year ago, exactly. And then a week after the accident, um, my older brother got hit by a car and killed. And, um, you know, like I said, <laughs> the whole family was just under serious attack. And it wasn't long after that that um my anxiety started up again and by january of this year of 2021 um i was having panic attacks quite frequently again and then uh i guess about the beginning of april i started having them every week every week and they were like they were you know when i was growing up in the sense that I never knew when it was going to happen. You know, they just come out of nowhere. It come on suddenly. And the difference was that this time was like just pure terror that was, you know, unexplainable. And all kind of thoughts were running through my head, things that I um, would never think otherwise, you know, things that, I didn't necessarily believe, but I had no control over the thoughts that would be rushing through my head. You know, I, uh, first off, I would, you could not convince me that I wasn't dying right then. But, and every time, you know, I'd go into prayer immediately. A lot of times, because my mind was racing so fast, I wouldn't be able to really have a, a, a good coherent prayer time to where I was able to know what to pray for, but that's when uh, the Holy Spirit kicks in and, you know, uh, the Bible says that, you know, we don't need to know what to, to pray for, even when we think we do. Um, and that's when, you know, the Spirit uh, prays for us, intercedes. But um, while I, I would be praying, things would just, thoughts would just fly through my head. You know, God's not real. You're going to just stop existing. But I can remember while I was praying, I would always pray and tell God these words I would remember, and I would say them every time I had a panic attack. Uh, 
God, I'm not scared to die. If I'm dying right now, that's fine. Please just take this fear away because it's not necessarily what's causing the fear because there's no there's no really um, reason for the fear. It just comes over you. And I every time I say, Lord, if I'm dying, that's fine. Just please take the fear away. Please just you know take the fear away. I don't mind dying. I just don't want to die in terror. And um, you know I uh, reached out to um, a few people that outside of my family there was only maybe two or three people um my prayer partner and best friend i uh he, he knew what was going on and you know he would pray with me um i had a two of the elders who would pray with me but um you know i i really hadn't shared it with anybody else outside my family and every time i would pray over the last really the last month the Lord would put one person on, on my mind either while I was praying or after my prayer was over. And um, the the last panic attack that I had, um, I was praying and the Lord um, brought something to my remembrance about this person that went all the way, I mean, went all the way back to 2016. And it was something that, um, you know, in that moment to where I cannot really have coherent thoughts, you know, because my mind's racing with fear. I would have never been able to think about that myself. And so I knew it was from the Lord and I reached out to this person and um, I really, I was you know, kind of worried for the same reasons that I was worried to come on the program and let people know what was going on with me. I was also worried to let people at church know what was going on and uh, to really let anybody outside of my little circle know what was going on because, you know, I have dealt with in the past. Um, I, I've been really, really betrayed by people who were supposed to be members of the body of Christ. And uh, so I was scared to allow myself to, you know, be that vulnerable with people. And uh, anyway, I, um, I reached out to him, and uh, the next day we uh, were on the phone. He, um, he called me and uh, or told me to call him either way. I, I talked with him for probably about an hour. and. That conversation helped me more than anything else that I've done, anything I've read. Um, the Lord truly sent me or sent him to me, gave him the words to say. The thing of it was, this person, somebody that I respect, look up to, uh, somebody who's been in the ministry for 28 years, and come to find out, he knew exactly what I was going through because he had also gone through it. And... Um, you know, he the things that he 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 was talking about himself, but he literally described the things that I had gone through or and I go through. You know, trying to read the Bible, trying to pray. Um, you know, after uh, dealing with this stuff, you know, the enemy will tell you all kind of lies. You know, um, that you're not worthy, um, that you're not a Christian because if you were, you wouldn't be dealing with these things if you were really walking with the Lord and these are things that I felt um, and he actually allowed me to see that even though the enemy was lying to me and making me believe that I didn't have any faith because if I had faith then I wouldn't be going through this fear and um, you know I wouldn't be thinking these things while um, in the middle of a panic attack but he told me, he said, uh, Jeremy, the truth is you actually have very strong faith because you're having problems that the majority of Christians don't deal with. And yet you're persevering. You know, you're preaching. You are you know, reaching people for the Lord. You're doing what you're supposed to do. You're bearing fruit even though you're dealing with something that can be crippling at times when it happens. And, you know, I never thought about it like that. It had never occurred to me. And once I started looking at it from that aspect, it helped me know how to pray. And, you know, I had been, of course, in Ephesians 6 the entire time. And 
I know all the right things to tell people, man. You know, I've had people come to me with all kinds of problems. Helping someone else is not the same thing as helping yourself. And, you know, I, I definitely know how to engage in a spiritual battle. And I know how to tell somebody else to do it. But when you're in the middle of it, I know for me, now this may not be something that anybody else has dealt with, but for me, I have a tendency sometimes to, instead of fighting the attacks with faith, whether they are from the demonic or they're coming from the flesh, regardless, they're there. You know, the fear is there. And instead of, you know, using scripture and the whole armor of God to overcome it, I had the, uh, the tendency to just kind of grin and bear it, you know, try to get through it on my own without allowing the Lord to help. Um, you know, the, I, I got a book recently that um, I had all intentions of telling people about here on the render for it, and it's by Daniel Duval. It's called Prayers That Shake Heaven and Earth. And um, I really, I mean, I, I buy so many books from so many different authors. I, uh, I'll see a book, want it, buy it, and won't read it for a year. Well, I've had this book sitting around for well over a year. And I just never picked it up. And I picked it up today for the first time. And, and there are some awesome prayers in there. I don't know, you know, how well it actually works. Um, I know Dan. Um, I don't know him really good. You know, we're Facebook friends, and uh, we've spoken. Uh, but and he seems very genuine. Um, and the prayers in the book seems like a really good tool to, you know, battle all kinds of things, not just spiritually, but to overcome things. I know that his ministry, for the most part, uh, they do all kinds of um, deliverance, and they, uh, more than anything, they help survivors of uh, um, satanic ritual abuse and abuse in general, not just satanic, but people who have been abused. And, you know, they do a lot of good, but... I am going to definitely be reading this book completely, and I'm going to try the prayers out, and I, I hope that it works. If it does, I will definitely be letting people know so they can get it. But um, you told me something earlier today, um, and you, know, you didn't go in detail, and I don't want you to go in detail here, but you said um, you, know, you actually went through a, a similar type situation, and you were able to get deliverance on your own. And, you know, I, I told you then that I believe that we can all uh, be delivered without another person. And the reason is, is because it's not the deliverance minister or the other person, whoever they are, that gives us deliverance. It's Jesus Christ. It's Amen. the Holy Spirit. And, uh, you know, I um, definitely want to go to the scripture and look at what Ephesians 6 says. But before we do, um, just for the sake of time, uh, I wanted to get your opinion on this spirit of fear. Um, you know, we know that it, the Bible tells us that God has not given us a spirit of fear, so it literally calls it a spirit of fear. Uh, do you believe that fear itself, especially the type fear I've been dealing with, do you think that it's a spiritual attack? Do you think it's, uh, you know, a, a mental thing? You know, people have mental problems, mental disorders. Uh, what's your opinion on it? Uh, that was fear is one of the, the first things I encountered after being born again um, in a different way um, before it was it was just driving just about every decision I made because I was just so full of fear for most of my life that you over time it's kind of like you're beat down to believe that's who you are your identity becomes well whatever the fear is right uh, so it could be fear of, of um, physical fear, fear of being harmed again. Uh, it could be fear of um, not pleasing someone, losing someone in a relationship. Uh, it could be fear of, of anything. It's it's one of those. It's one of those tactics of the of our enemy that um, there there really is no limit to how many different ways it can manifest. You know, each each person is going to have maybe their own variations, but um, 
at the end of the day, fear is um, designed by the enemy to control us, to lead us in, lead us into hopelessness, despair, and ultimately our destruction. Absolutely. It's crippling. Uh, it, it, it will prevent the the Christian from from bearing any fruit. I mean, it, it can completely cripple a ministry, uh, break marriages. It can lead to suicides. It can lead to all sorts of of things. As you were talking, uh, what came to mind with the armor of God was, and again, it's Paul talking about our weapons, the weapons of our warfare, right? He says they're not carnal, right? <laughs> uh, but they're divinely powerful for the destruction of fortresses, so strongholds. And, you know, early on my walk, I would hear this, these scriptures, and I'd be like, wow, that sounds pretty neat. I have no idea what they're talking about. <laughs> what are they talking about? Like, what? how do I have access to these uh, supernatural, if you want to call it that, um, heavenly power. And um, fear is something that it, I think, I mean, I have not encountered where it doesn't present itself in some form. So the, 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 the beauty of, our, of, our, of the Christ of our Lord is he's our teacher and he'll teach us to trust him every step of the way when we turn to him. That's literally it. When we repent, we turn to him. Prayer, um, asking forgiveness if we're, if, we're, if we're walking in sin, confessing that sin to the Lord, confessing it to others that are that you can trust, that are firmly in, in, in the body of Christ. That is powerful. When, when, I, when I was running a, the men's fellowship, uh, it's not going now, but when I was running it for two years, anytime someone would confess a sin, it was like you could almost like just see those shackles coming off, those fear shackles, because that can be scary. You know, people don't want someone to judge them or look look less look at them as less than what they think they should be. But even that that desire can become an idol, right? It can become a you know we're not really giving ourselves as fully as God wants us to give ourselves over to Him. And I think at the end of the day, um, we're told to overcome, and He He's the way. He show, He gives us a way to overcome. He knows we can't do it on our own. Uh, and his word, you know, is, is absolutely essential. I mean, we have to be, you don't have to be a, a Bible expert. You know, you don't have to have degrees or any of that. Um, but you do have to have, um, you know, it's almost like exercise. If you don't exercise, don't expect to, you know, be able to run a mile or two. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. I, I know what you mean. And I think that for me, that's, one of the reasons why it affected me so much as far as wanting to tell other people, even though that rationally, I know that the more people know, the more people I have standing in the gap for me, you know, sending up prayers. But it's pride that keeps you from wanting to admit things like that. And pride is a sin. Yep. And that is why, um, you know, I, I really didn't have a choice but to let go of that pride, open up, and just let people know that I'm, I'm suffering through something. I'm going through something, and I need your prayers. Uh, it's It was something that at one time was, uh, you know, controlling my life uh, to an extent. It uh, was at least affecting me to, to where I wouldn't come on the air and do the program i um also i started a a financial venture so to speak with um that a sister in christ had told me about and uh really you know she has been sharing it with i guess everybody she's talked about talked about it on her program all the time those special programs just on it it's uh, about you know getting away from the dollar and um helping you know the people in and out of the body get uh financial freedom and freedom from the dollar it's uh and you know to be honest i was very skeptical to begin with because it's cryptocurrency and i was kind of leery of it for that fact but um anyway point is um i invested money in it and haven't touched it because i mean that's something else that is affected in my life you know but the I think a lot of the, the fear has also stemmed. I'm also going through things uh, 
health-wise. You know, I've uh, I think that one of the the problems that I'm dealing with with my health is uh, literally a manifestation of this fear because I I just found out I've got a peptic ulcer and it has seriously um, been bothering me. I, uh, it is very painful and um, I went to the doctor last week and found out that it was there and um, she, my doctor told me that it probably was caused by this anxiety because um, the, apparently you know the, the anxiety causes the pH uh, levels in your stomach to go a lot higher mm -hmm. and it can cause a, an ulcer and it did in, in my case but uh, that and I've also um, been diagnosed with uh, cardiovascular and um, circulatory disease um, that I'm trying to fight and you know I'm sure all of that along with you know the things that started last year have um, you know subconsciously affected the my thought process and mm -hmm. uh, caused to a degree the, the anxiety to become worse but I still think that there's a spiritual aspect to it. A uh, friend of mine, uh, James Frazier, who is my best friend and prayer partner, he uh, he said, and we, we both agreed on this, we both said it to each other at one point or another, but that a lot of times we Christians have a tendency to give the devil more credit than he's due. You know, we tend to blame everything on the demonic and on the mm -hmm. devil, when a lot of times it'll be the flesh. Because, you know, face it, the flesh is fallen. You know, even though we become born again, we are still human, and you know we're still in a fallen body until we, uh, you know, until we get our new bodies at the the second coming. You know, a lot of people think that you're gonna get a new body when you die, but that's not what Scripture says. You know, it says we get it at the second coming. Um, but that's neither here nor there. The point is that in this case. Um, one of the biggest reasons why I was not treating it as a spiritual problem is because of the fact that my thinking was I didn't want to give devil, the devil credit that was not his. And that caused me to not battle the fear spiritually because I wasn't looking at it as coming from the spirit realm. I was looking at it as you know coming from my flesh. And because of that, I think I was at a real disadvantage. And so I, you know, I went into the Word, and uh, that, that I tell you what, that book that you told me about, I I got it on Kindle now, and I am I'm going to read it. It looks to be a very very uh, good book as far as um, the whole armor of God. Mm -hmm. And um, I believe the Bible word for word. I believe that everything in it is 100% true. And, you know, Ephesians 6, we see that it says here, it says, Children, obey your parents and the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment, with promise, that it may be well with thee, and that thou may live long on the earth. And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Servants, be obedient to them that are your masters, according to the flesh, with fear and trembling, and, and singleness of your heart as unto Christ. Not with eye service as men pleasers, but as the servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart, with good will doing service as to the Lord and not to men, knowing that whatsoever good thing any man doeth, the same shall he receive of the Lord, whether he be bond or free. And ye masters, do the same things unto them, forbearing threatening, knowing that your master also in heaven neither is there neither is their respect of persons with him. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Now, when we uh, think about Ephesians 6 and the whole armor of God, I know from talking to people and also myself, we tend to start right from Ephesians chapter 6 verse 11. We start there because that's where it talks about this first talks about the whole armor of God. But if we leave out verses one through ten, then 
you're really crippling yourself on how to put on the whole armor of God. See, Ephesians 6 is about spiritual warfare, but the entire chapter is about spiritual warfare. Mm -hmm. It's literally telling you how to live from, you know, from verse 1 all the way to verse 10. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then in verse 10, it just continues telling you how to live. Yep. And it says, you know, fi uh, final, uh, it says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. And then, of course, it goes into what the armor is. It says, stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth. So um, I've heard different uh, ministers, different speakers, teachers, also in books, when talking about the whole armor of God and how to put it on, first of all, they always leave out verses 1 through 10. And I've heard a lot of them talk about the whole armor of God like it's some magical spell that you can read in a prayer and say, I need the the you know, my loins guard with uh, truth, and they'll just go through the different verses and name the different parts of the armor like that's putting it on. But it's, it's right. truly not, you know, to, to put on the armor of God, uh, to have your loins girt about with truth is to be honest. Tell the truth. Do not lie. And in the beginning of Ephesians 6, it starts off literally uh, giving Ten Commandments. And, you know, thou shalt not bear false witness is another Ten Commandments. Yep. Uh, and it goes through, of course, you know, telling you to have your feet, uh, I mean, you're having on the breastplate of righteousness. Uh, live a righteous life. How do we live a righteous life? Go to the doctrine of Christ and find out how one can be righteous. Obey the commands of Christ. Bear fruit as a Christian. There's um, there's the, the helmet. If I can go back to the, the helmet of salvation for a moment, Jeremy. Mm -hmm. um, the the helmet, what does the helmet do? It protects what part of the, the body? It protects your, your mind, your brain, your, right. your body. It protects uh, your identity. Um, in the book I mentioned, uh, it'll explain that a little bit better, but Ephesians 6, uh, 11 through 17, uh, is almost a mini index on the back of Ephesians of what the whole book of Ephesians is about. If we started Ephesians 1, uh, Ephesians 1 affirms our identity in Christ. It talks about who we are in Christ. Um, so our thought life, the, the, the battle, the frontline battle between our, our Father's kingdom and, and the enemy is in the mind. Satan wants to have access to our thought life. He wants to, uh, or have other people that he has access to come in and maybe play a, a distraction in our lives or, or cause calamities if we allow him to. And if we're not prepared every day, um, for me, the, the, when you have all the armor pieces on, the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the belt of truth, the sandals of peace, the sword of the spirit, the shield of faith, when you don't have, and it's the last part, prayer, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> People forget that. Uh, at the back end, if, you, if you're a Christian and, and maybe you're not praying that much anymore, you're finding yourself just maybe not having that desire to pray, or maybe you're getting just so busy with things in life and it's easy to do. It's, it's just, it's so easy to, to fall for one day you don't pray and then it turns into a week. And then before you know it, you're not reading the Bible as much as you should. And if you're not, if you're not doing the Bible, then you don't have your sword of the spirit. Yep. And if you're not doing that, um, we're not practicing righteousness. We're not practicing holiness. We're, we're backsliding before we know it. Um, things that maybe we have even thought we beat start creeping back. Right. That, 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 the devil, see, the devil to me, he's, he's, a, he's just a drug dealer, <laughs> All right? He's looking for customers, uh, and there's no shortage of customers, you know? But we, we've, been, we've been freed from that, so, you know, we're told not to go back into that slavery, and this is, the arm of God represents to me the full manifestation of Christ and the Christian. It represents the, the, the you know, what we can't be like Christ. We've all uh, sinned and fallen short of the glory of, of the Lord. But our call is definitely to be holy, because he is holy. And that requires us to, to keep giving him more and more of us and more of us out of, out of love, nothing else. Uh, fear and anxiety and all that, it ultimately comes from, it's a blessing, 
You know, Paul talked about in, uh, in 2, 2 Corinthians 12, uh, in his weakness, he'll boast even all the more about his weaknesses because the power of God is perfected in our weaknesses. Um, God's grace, when it comes into our life, you know, it, 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 he invites us He invites us to the table. He's not dragging us, kicking us, screaming. <laughs> he'll say, you know, if you want to go eat another table, I mean, you can. It's just not going to be my table. <laughs> um, but if you want to come eat at my table, then it requires you to have a fear of the Lord, number one. If we don't have a fear of the Lord, and I, I used to really not like that word when I was a young Christian. I was like, and I'm, I was in the military, you know, I'm supposed to be a macho guy. And, uh, I've been doing martial arts, I'm 10 years old and gotten in plenty of fights when I was a young man. Why am I going to fear God? He's supposed to be this loving God, right? And then later, you know, as you mature, you realize, you start realizing your identity starts changing. And then you become almost like a little baby that becomes more aware of his daddy. You become more aware of who God is. And you're like, wow, why would, how dare I not obey? <laughs> Absolutely. That goes to what you said um, is exactly what the word says. You know, the yep. beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord. Yep. 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 So that's, that hits on what you're talking about with the, you know, so if we have a helmet, if we, you know, if you go on a battlefield, the image of, was of a Roman legionary, right? With the, yeah. the, the, mm -hmm. the, the, the armor on, Roman right. soldiers had. If, if you go out to a, a battlefield without your helmet on, you ain't gonna last so long. Right. It, it won't take, they won't take much more than a little, a little rock being thrown at you. <laughs> and you know what I mean? You're, you're, you're not gonna, and if we go out without our, our identity in Christ and in our mind, um, it made me think of uh, tying it into when when Christ uh, was baptized and then the Spirit of the, uh, the Holy Spirit led him into the wilderness to be tested. And where did Satan where did Satan attack Christ? He attacked him in his identity. If you are the Son of God, right, right. turn that rock into bread. <laughs> and um, so that there's a connection with that. If 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 and it it it, 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 it can even affect it can affect. I don't care if you walked in Christ for 10, 20, 30 years. It can still come on you in different ways. Um, when I when I, I told you I started street preaching and evangelizing, I went I went recently to a place where there was tons of people in the middle of Dallas at JFK Memorial. Um, you know, there's lots of people there, and I'm new to this. You know, and I was all gung ho. I got you know had my gear, had my speaker, had you know all the street preaching stuff on. And as soon as I got there and I pulled up and I saw these people, I got the car. There was something that came up against me. I heard a voice, and it said the voice told me, "What are you doing here?" You just need you just need to get in that car and go back home, right? <laughs> Started trying to attack my identity. Who are you? Who do you think you are, right? And I knew who, I knew who was, who was you know where it was coming from, and that just I responded with the word. You know what the you know what word came to me? He who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is not worthy of me. It's not worthy to be one of my my, my disciples. That's the and when that word hit me. I was like, well, hey, you can talk all you want, but. You, let, let's go have this conversation on the way to where, where the Lord's led me to go today. Mm -hmm. And there's there's one thing that continues. It's all throughout um, the scriptures as far as Christianity. And the main thing is endure, endure, endure. Right. And, you know, that is talking about, of course, enduring until the end, being the end of the road, being our death, or when Christ comes again. But it's also talking about in things we do in our uh, walk, you know, mm -hmm. uh, the, the enemy's going to come against us and we are to endure. And there's always a reward if you endure that, that that's another um, part of that uh, theme that continues on. You know, Jesus, when he's talking to the churches in Revelation, mm -hmm. you know, every one of them, there is a, a reward at the end if they endure. Mm -hmm. And there's always the opposite of that is consequences if you don't endure mm -hmm. and the same goes for like what you were talking about when you were getting ready to uh preach you know street preach going out in the evangelism and the enemy was lying to you and just like the word says you know the holy spirit uh, will guard our hearts and minds and bring all things to our remembrance Amen. Uh, and he brought that 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 word of scripture to yep. your remembrance just mm -hmm. when you needed it <laughs> and you know i think that has so much to do with, you know, you were talking about you wanted to go back to the helmet of salvation and how it protects our minds. Well, the Holy, if you are, if you're saved, if you have salvation and you have the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. and the Bible says that, like I, I was just saying that the Holy Spirit uh, guards our hearts and our minds where the enemy mm -hmm. attacks us is, of course, like you said, in our minds. Mm -hmm. And 
if he can get our minds, then he's got us. You know, if he can defeat you in your mind, then yep. Yep. he's defeated you. Uh, but if you endure, you know, uh, just like the, the Bible says, resist the devil and he will flee from you. The same, mm -hmm. you know, Jesus endured, resisted Satan. Uh, you know, every time he um, tempted him, uh, Jesus resisted him and he responded with scripture. You know, right. he, he quoted that uh, sword of the spirit. Yep. Um, and eventually, yeah. of course, we know yep. he uh, he endured until the end. And, you know, he the devil flee, you know, mm -hmm. had to leave him. And it's interesting, you know, that the, the helmet of salvation, you would think, or I, at least I thought, you know, head down, right? But he actually puts, Paul puts the helmet of salvation on the back of Ephesians 6, verse 17. Um, he puts it right before, uh, he puts it right after the shield of faith, right? Mm -hmm. Which he tells us, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Then he talks about the helmet of salvation and then the sword of the spirit. Um, and, you know, the... You know, where where does the enemy, where has he attacked since day one? He attacked Eve. Right? Never mind. Uh, everyone else, you know, Cain, same thing. Everyone everyone in the Bible has, um, you know, that word, the righteous side of things where they were presented with opposition. And the one thing they all did was they all turned to the Lord yeah. because they knew their identity was in the Lord. Yeah, you're right. I, I will say this, though, uh, you know, it gives all of these areas, you know, all of these different parts of armor that, you know, cover our entire spirit man because, you know, it's not physical armor, it's spiritual armor. And um, a lot of people don't don't like, I, I've gotten emails and uh, messages anytime I talk about the spirit man, people don't like it because a lot of people don't, I believe that we have body, soul, and spirit. I believe that the soul and spirit are two different things. Yep. Uh, but you know that's a whole Flat. other discussion. Well. <laughs> yeah. But right. each of these different parts of armor um, protect certain areas, and if you if you look at the spirit realm as a whole and your life as a whole, if you leave doors open or if you open doors, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, then the enemy is going to come in and take advantage of it. It's the same with yep. this armor. Uh, you know, if if you have all the armor on. But you for you know you don't have say the shield, but you've got everything else. Then you, you may as well have none of it. Right. You've left the door open. You've left yep. yourself open. Yep. That's and, a good. Point, is that you know it's not one or it's all or nothing, <laughs> and that really is you know what the Christian walk is. It's it's all or nothing. If you look at um, our early brothers and sisters that paid the ultimate price as martyrs for the faith, you know it's recorded that they sang hymns <laughs> while they're being mauled by lions you know in their arenas and torched um that can only happen when you are just completely given over to christ and through faith you know by faith Absolutely. you're kind of right you were saying earlier about the entire book of ephesians how ephesians 6 was just kind of mm -hmm. like an overview and mm -hmm. you're right and ephesians chapter 4 and verse 23 says you know to mm -hmm. renew your mind Amen. <laughs> and yeah. the I think that re renewing of the mind, um, it says to be renewed in the spirit of your mind that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Mm -hmm. Therefore, putting away lying, speak yep. every man truth with his neighbor, for Amen. we are members one of another. Yep. Be angry and sin not. Let not mm -hmm. the sun go down upon your wrath, neither, mm -hmm. neither give place to the devil. So, you know, you, you hit the nail on the head there. Mm -hmm. The entire letter of Ephesians, uh, mm -hmm. you know, Paul literally gives the outline to a healthy spiritual life. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and if you have a healthy spiritual life, then, you know, you'll have, at, you may not necessarily have a healthy physical life, but you'll have a happy physical life. Yeah. You know, if you're, 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 um, if spiritual health is good, then you know your life is a whole lot better. It makes me think of um, King Saul, right? Uh, anointed, you know, he's picked to be the the first king because Israel didn't. They wanted their own a man to be a king. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But um, and you know, I'm guilty of this too. Uh, we we tend to want to go only so far, right? And then there's those things that we don't want anyone to know about, or we're not willing to give that up. You know, let let me have let me have let me have all the blessings, but I don't want to give this one thing up or whatever it is, right? <laughs> right then we're going to miss the mark. 
I mean, we're, we're going to miss the mark, you know, because our life is very short. We're but a vapor, you know, we're, we're like, we're like grass. We, we, we would just fade. And um, before we know it, I mean, eternity sounds to me like a very long time. <laughs> and uh, if, if I have only a very small amount of time, uh, you know, Lord give us wisdom to number the days. And while today is still today, let us do the workings of, of, of our Lord. Um, we need to personally have that intimate connection with 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 our Lord ourselves before He can use us for anything else. And everything else, if if uh, you know, we're both married, we're both uh, parents. Uh, if we're not, as the man, the head of the family, if we're not uh, walking in, in that uh, obedience to, to God. Our family's going to suffer for it. Yeah. Our, our wives are going to suffer for it. Our children are going to suffer for it. Um, and I speak, I speak from experience. I'm not speaking as, uh, in some sort of self-righteous spirit. Um, I failed miserably <laughs> many times. And th I mean, these are things that we all have to continue to work on. You know, we're, we're none going to be perfect and have it down this side of eternity. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I have failed. And not only that, I will fail again. But we'll fail less. You know, I tell people is the, the heresy of sinless perfection. You know, I've seen a lot of that stuff floating around lately. Yeah, um, a lot of that's got to do with this whole hyper grace, uh, mm -hmm. Western churchianity that yep. Yep. we but, see everywhere. Know, we, we've all sinned and fall short of the glory of the Lord. But while we can't be sinless, the only sinless one is, is our Lord. We sin less, right? Yeah, right. And, and that's, you know, uh, righteousness um is not possible for us but see we have christ in us and mm -hmm. through christ all things are possible Amen. and although we can't be perfect we can live a life of righteousness and holiness Amen. Amen. Um, if we just and see i got into this with um some um brothers and sisters of the um hebrew roots persuasion uh, just a couple of days ago uh I was, they were talking about, uh, you know, how Christ came not to destroy the, the law, but to fulfill the law and that we are to still keep the law and the Ten Commandments. And, yeah. um, you know, I, I definitely didn't want an argument. I was trying to explain to them the problem that, um, you know, everyone who believes that way has, and that is that they don't understand what fulfill means, how yeah. he fulfilled the law, first off. All of the law and the prophets had one objective, and that was to foreshadow and point to Christ. Mm -hmm. um, no one, absolutely nobody, could live the law perfectly. And the law, um, through the law alone, there was only sin and death. Yep. And you know, the Bible is very clear that God does not delight in the blood of bulls and mm -hmm. lambs. Um, and when Jesus came, the way he fulfilled the law was by living it perfectly, living a perfect life as a human being. Did that destroy the law? Did it do away with it? No, it's still there. To do what? To point to Christ. Sure. It's for the uh, the unbeliever, right? Yeah. It's for the unholy, the, the wicked to know what yeah. is right. And then when I got to the, the part where, where Christ says, because I agree with this 100%, you know, Jesus says, if you love me, keep my commandments. You know, yep. if you abide in me, I will abide in you. Yep. Um, and, you know, I, I went through the doctrine of Christ, the red letters, where Christ gives all of his commandments. Mm -hmm. And I was telling them what the commands and what the sayings and teachings of Christ were. And I got the yeah, but. Yeah, <laughs> but it was God. It was Jesus who gave the Ten Commandments. Mm -hmm. I said, true. But. If you keep the commands Jesus gives in the New Testament, guess what? Yeah. By default, you are keeping the Ten Commandments. You cannot keep the commands of Christ without following the Ten Commandments. Christ took it a step further because they should have read a little bit further where it says, um, for I said, you know, in uh, Matthew 5.20, it says, For I say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scratch and Pharisees, you shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. How can anybody exceed these? And the Pharisees were the most religious, the most observant, uh, experts mm -hmm. in the law. And you had to be better than them. <laughs> You're right. Yeah. That and he it's tells, cool. and he, he says flat out, um, he he tells what all the law and prophets hang on. Mm -hmm. And, you know, 
it's as far as the uh, feast goes. First off, there's ever since 70 A.D. There is no way anybody, even a Jewish person, can keep the law of Moses. Nobody can. There's right. no Levitical priesthood. There's no temple. Right. Even if there was, you know, that wouldn't be what we were supposed to do. Yeah. But as far as the feasts go, I like the feast days. I do uh, because they, just like the rest of the Torah, point to Christ. And so if anybody wants to celebrate the feast of the Lord, by all means, go for it. As long as you're doing it in the spirit of this is pointing to Christ, you know. I, and you know, my family and I stopped celebrating all of the pagan holidays: Christmas, Easter, all of them. Anything that the Roman Catholic Church implemented, we yep. got rid of it. But now, eleven, eleven. <laughs> we don't. Uh, we aren't ritualistic and dogmatic about celebrating the feast of the Lord like if we don't we're committing a sin mm -hmm. but in place of these things you know we will especially Passover um, because mm -hmm. we're told to uh, celebrate the the Last Supper you know Jesus said this do you do you do in remembrance of me and so we celebrate what we call in my family the Christian Passover right. you know we, we aren't celebrating um, the Death, the angel of death passing over the the firstborn, you know, in Egypt, mm -hmm. we're celebrating the the ultimate, final, perfect Passover Lamb, which is Jesus and His resurrection, mm -hmm. to bring us back in communion with the Father. Amen. And um, yeah, Paul talks about it too in Romans fourteen and in some other parts. Uh, uh, you know, if, if you're going to celebrate the days holy as as unto the Lord, then you know, don't let anyone question you. Yeah, let no man judge you in a feast or a Sabbath or holy day. Yeah, yeah. For me, the Sabbath, uh, you know, I became a Jew. So after being Catholic, I became a Jew at 27, half my family. Long story, I won't get into it. But, um, it, you know, you're left with, Paul talks about the laws. There's no value to the laws. So of course not. The laws was absolutely necessary, but Christ elevated the law of Christ, and Paul identifies that there's a law of Christ that um, he elevated from the law that was given to Moses at Sinai. And uh, what comes to mind is divorce, marriage and divorce. Um, it was permitted in Sinai. Uh, you would give your wife a, a get, you know, a certificate of divorce. Only the man could divorce. The woman had no rights to divorce the man. And um, and Christ talked about that in, I think it was Matthew 19. Um, he said, because of the hardness of your hearts, Moses permitted you to give your wife a certificate of divorce but then he elevated it right and the, all of it's designed for us to rely less on ourselves and have more of christ in us mm -hmm. for that yeah. old man to die and like you said the spiritual man to live in christ mm -hmm. right to, 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 to die again to live as christ yeah. um that's so that concept of christ in us that's where the to tie it back to ephesians 6 you know paul's speaking to a particular audience in in ephesus of romans um so that they can relate with things that a lot of them would have to put on anyways on a regular basis. Yeah. So it's, it's one of those things of, um, you know, it, it's kind of, if you think about it, it's kind of arcane. Like, why would that apply today? <laughs> like I'm not putting, walking around with a knock with a, a helmet, a, you know, and, and a shield and a sword. Um, but spiritually speaking, those things represent, because our weapons are not carnal, um, how we have to completely, um, and it's not something we do, so I want to make sure like we're not doing it. Yeah, absolutely. We're not we're not capable of doing it. Uh, we're having to go to the one that is, and he's the one doing it. And um, uh, I wanted to tie it in somewhere in the beginning when you're talking to to idolatry, to idols. You know, in Exodus 20, I think uh, I had this up. Exodus 20. I mean, he starts right there, verse three says, "You shall have no other gods before me." Um, and I think by extension, we can turn ourselves into gods, right? When we, when we rebel and we seek to exalt ourselves and, and be prideful uh, and not wanting to, not wanting to really give ourselves completely over to Christ because he wants all of us. He doesn't want 99% of us, but he wants 100% because he gave 100% for us. And he made us anyways to be his 100%. Now, who, who wants to be married to someone who doesn't want to be 100% with their spouse? How much more we've got, you know? 
I um, was just kind of glancing down at, mm -hmm. uh, I said, I was just kind of glancing down at Ephesians um, 4 again, looking at the, mm -hmm. the beginning of it. Um, and, you know, he, he, he's writing, of course, like you said, to um, the church in Ephesus, but, you know, he, he says, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called, with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Right. There is one body and one Spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all, and through all, and in you all. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Amen. And that's what I was talking about when you and I were talking on the phone earlier about the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Um, you know, we are given this grace and, and the Holy Spirit power according to the measure of the gift of Christ in which we need it. You know, if you are going through something that requires you to have um, you know, the complete fullness of the Holy Spirit, like say in the day of Pentecost, then yep. that's what you'll get. Yep. If not, then all the praying for it in the world is not going to change that. Exactly. And, you know. Exactly. It, I, used well, to have, I used to have the saying, you know, I, I don't know how biblical it is, but it helped me. Um, and it's not to put down prayer because prayer is an absolute necessity of the Christian life. I say uh, a pound of prayer is worth an ounce of obedience. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, uh, you know, Scripture also says that, you know, we don't even know what to pray for. We can pray all day long, but, mm -hmm. you know, truly, we don't even know what we need. We don't know our needs. Yeah. We just know what we want. And even, in, you know, standing in the gap for somebody else, we truly don't know what to pray for for them. We can only pray for what they tell us. Yep. And, you know, that's where the Holy Spirit comes in again, and you will get that, like you said, according mm -hmm. to your obedience. And it, yep. it, if you go down further um, in verse 11, um, well, first verse 10 says, He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. Mm -hmm. And he gave some apostles mm -hmm. and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. And that's not going to happen, we know, until yeah. we are, uh, you know, in the New Jerusalem with uh, yeah. Christ. Yeah. You know, <laughs> until God. he comes again, uh, you know, we're not going to all be perfect. Nope. But I think it's important to know your calling. Um, and the only way you're going to know your calling is if you are walking out your salvation. And, you know, mm -hmm. Ephesians is not just a guide to spiritual warfare. If you use the book, I mean, the entire Bible, you know, is the guide. But the book of Ephesians, you know, along with the teachings of Christ especially mm -hmm. uh, will tell you exactly how to uh, walk out your salvation. Yep. And then, of course, you know, there are many other uh, epistles and letters in the New Testament that will tell us, you know, how to live and how to become. Well, it's, uh, it's not even our warfare. Oh, it's not. All, you know. Well, Sports, right so we can only put we can only do what is required for the lord to give us the armor to protect us um we can we can't fight against uh the spiritual principalities and powers um you know that we have to have you know the king of kings the one who commanded and mm -hmm. did all this Although I will have to say, you know, we do have authority in Christ. Now, it's not us doing it even then. Right. Uh, but we can do way more than 
we realize if we are walking out our salvation and walking in the authority that we have in Christ. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the disciples, the apostles, they were men just like we are. You know, they were fallen just like we are. The difference is they were, and they didn't always. Now, we're talking about after the death, burial, resurrection, and ascension of Christ. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they failed just as much as us and some some of them more. I mean, think of Judas. Yeah. Um, you know, you, we like to think that, you know, if we were there and actually saw Jesus, that we would have the faith that, that the disciples had. But, you know, mm-hmm. Judas was there the entire time. Right. And still didn't believe, still betrayed him. Yeah. Um, so, you know. He stands for the, the, the Judas and all of us, right? We stand. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, how do we betray our Lord? You know, if, if we've died with Christ at the cross um, and we are his 100 percent, then you're absolutely right. It's not us even doing it. It's it's him doing it through us. Um, but we can't get there um, unless we endure and overcome these smaller battles. And they may seem like huge insurmountable things, but they, they almost always do, right? Like the, the oh, best yeah. come from those battles. The, the the biggest breakthroughs come from when it seems absolutely hopeless. It's, it's just a horrible situation. Um, you know, someone could have died. You might be going you know, close to death or, or being incarcerated or whatever the situation is. Um, but whenever you, you just give it to God, you know, it's, it's um, Matthew 11 at the end when he talks about uh, come to me all, you know, who are weary burdened, um, mm-hmm. you know, he's our teacher. He's, he's our, he's our savior. He's our Lord or he isn't. Um, That's right. when we, when we say we're Christian, we're, we're really, that should be with, with some deep reverence. I, I didn't feel comfortable calling myself a Christian until I know exactly what you mean. It's like me. I, uh, I try not to get into this with people because you know, every, everybody knows more than you do. You know, um, we, as people tend to hold on to our, um, beliefs, you know, our tradition, but I, um, I don't like the, the term saved. He's saved. I'm saved. Are you saved while you're alive on this earth? I mean, our salvation is from what? From death. That's what we overcome. Yeah. Right. And right. until, um, we have, fin- I mean, who wins a race who, before they've finished it? Right. Right. Uh, yeah. I thought of, uh, I thought of, you know, cause I'm a lawyer by trade. I thought of the courtroom. That's almost as pretentious as you being, you know, brought up on criminal charges and you walking in the court and saying, I know I'm going to be innocent, Lord, uh, judge, you're on. <laughs> yeah. uh, if you wouldn't do that with the human judge, how can we, how would we have the audacity to do that with um, the judge? The judge, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's why Paul said, work out your salvation in fear and trembling. Right? Fear and trembling, that's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Um, and, so, you know, uh, to me, I, one thing, and I, 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 get scared i think a lot of this may have to do with my personality because i've always had like a very mild personality um i uh i definitely know now what it means to fear the lord and i do fear the lord um i have ultimate reverence from him because um you know he did love us enough to send his son so that we may be reconciled to him but we are talking everybody likes to uh, what comes to people's minds is what they've heard this preacher say, that preacher say, what they've been taught their entire lives, not what they've gotten from the Word of God. You know, yep. that, that they themselves, along with the Holy Spirit, have come to the understanding to, mm-hmm. of. And, um, and those, those words can be, can be difficult. You made me think of the part where um, Christ said in the, in, the, in the temple, he said, um, you must eat of my body and drink of my blood. Mm-hmm. And many of the heart departed. They couldn't handle that, that word. They could. They say this, that's too much. That's that's such a hard teaching. Yeah. And um, when he asked his, you know, the inner circle, are you are you going to leave me too? <laughs> and Peter said, where, where are we going to go? You have the words of life. <laughs> where else would we go? And we have to be like that. We have to cling to to Christ with everything. We have to in everything with everything, all the time. We we it's just mm-hmm. that's the way to walk uh, with him. Uh, otherwise, we're we're you know it's not part time vocation being a christian is not a part time it's something you have to wake up and do every day you know Mm -hmm. you may have done great yesterday but in the morning guess what you have to wake up pick up your cross deny yourself and follow him yep yep and unfortunately the the doctrine of you know uh once saved always saved the Mm -hmm. doctrine that you cannot um 
lose your salvation. Right. Uh, that is uh, one of the very unfortunate uh, doctrines of men, because I mean, it's it, it's not, and that's exactly what it is. It is a tradition yep. of men. Um, yep. Jesus, if you read the Gospels and every single one of his parables, his teachings, right. you know, it, it's very, it's not easy for everybody to see. And he says that, you know, talking to his disciples, he said, you know, the world won't, under, I'm talking parables mm -hmm. and, you know, the world won't understand this, but you understand. Right. Um, and we should be able to understand this. And he says over and over, he talks about, you know, those who come on the vine, those who are adopted into the kingdom, they are believers. Right. You know, just like the parable of uh, the seed that falls, you have the seed that falls on good ground. Mm -hmm. um, then you have some that falls on the stony places. And mm -hmm. uh, in all of them, you have, or not all of them, but like the stony places and uh, one other one, it, it says in there, you know, that they heard the word and yeah. rejoiced. You know, they loved the Lord. And, and in other parables, he talks about those. You know, Are you talking who, about the four seeds? The, yeah. The seed that fell on the road, the birds came and took it. And then mm -hmm. uh, the one, the, the seed that fell on the rocky places, but it, it, it heard the word and mm -hmm. it was it, it encouraged, but it had no root. And then the, the third seed, which I think most people fall into, that don't, that aren't the, the, the last one that you want to be, is they, that they get choked out by the, the uh, cares not, of this world. Cares of the world. So it's not just. Yeah bad things it's you're pursuing things that god didn't lead you that god didn't tell you to pursue that <laughs> you and want it. that is why the the doctrine of the kingdom the two kingdoms is so important mm -hmm. when you uh, are born again so that's people don't really understand what baptism is they, they think right. it's just something that we do as symbolic no the baptism is you being born again just yep. like when you come out of your mother's womb you come out of water Yep. When you go into that water, that baptismal water, whether it be a pool, a river, whatever, when you come out, that is your new birth. That represents your new birth. Right. You are born again into the kingdom of God. You are adopted mm -hmm. into the Israel of God. Right. And you're on the divine. Mm -hmm. And you are a branch. But Amen. Jesus is clear that the branches that do not put forth fruit mm -hmm. are cut off and thrown into the fire. Yep. If you cannot see that that is a representation of a believer because it's not somebody in the kingdom of the world, they're in the kingdom of God on yep. the vine. They are yep. a branch. Yep. But when they don't produce fruit, they are cut off yeah. and thrown into the fire. That is such a clear representation of yep. not just somebody who's flat out always rejected God and Christ going to hell. Right. No, this is the representation of someone who was a part of the body and the mind, mm -hmm. not following the teachings of Christ, you know, being the lukewarm, backslidden, whatever you want to call it, that is cut off yeah. and thrown right. into the fire. Matthew 7, where he talks about, uh, he talks about so many parables yeah. that apply to, 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 if you want to call them believers. I, actually, I, I had a hard time with that word because even demons believe in they tremble. Right? Yeah. Uh, I like to think of uh, followers. Followers being, is the best way to put you it. You follow yeah. Christ. You're 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 His slave. You're His servant. You're yeah. You're a citizen of the kingdom. Yeah, yeah. It's Him working through you. You're no longer your own. You're bought at a price. He said many are going to say, "Lord, Lord," you know. He's going to say, "Depart from you know." Didn't we prophesy? And didn't we do this? <laughs> didn't we do that? I mean, yeah. who? What kind of uh, you know, lost person as the the people in the church type language would say what lost person is going to be casting out demons and prophesying and mm -hmm. all the things that Jesus says people will say, didn't we? And right. he's going to say, depart from me. I never knew you. It wasn't, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't him doing it. It was someone else. And we know who that someone else is. <laughs> and you know, that, that to me is what gives me that fear of the Lord. Mm -hmm. I would never, I, I have such a hard time. Now I, I know that, if I died right now, I know that I am saved. You know, people yeah. always want to tell me that, uh, you know, the things that I say about salvation is taking away from what Jesus did on the cross. But it's not. Mm -hmm. What he did is there for everyone. It yeah. is the free gift of everyone. We, you'll However, know, you'll the, know the fruits, right? Yeah, yeah. You'll know the free them. gift is entering into the kingdom that's the free gift 
after you've entered into the kingdom, right. then <laughs> you either choose to stay there by following the teachings of Christ, producing fruit, yeah. or you don't. You know, you go back into the world. Yeah. And, you know, you can't be in the kingdom of God and the kingdom of the world. You're in one or the other. In Matthew 25, um, brother, it's uh, the foolish versions and the wise versions, right? It's yes. a, the parable of the talents. <laughs> And what you do with what was given to you, you know, um, and then it goes right into the judgment. It goes right into the the sheep and the goats, and um, you know, all this stuff requires uh, it requires just childlike faith. It's just in the kingdom of heaven, you have to have childlike faith. You have to be like one of these children. Um, what what are the characteristics of children in that context? I think of obedient children that follow their parents. Um, and you know, children don't have the problem of pride the way adults do. When it comes down to it, it's pride yeah. that keeps us from yep. hearing and believing the truth. Yep. You know, um, when I'm talking to somebody and I'm telling them, you know, the things that we were just talking about, about salvation mm -hmm. and how you must abide in it. See, all of Jesus' promises, every one of them have a if after it. But people, because of people not reading scripture for themselves right. and because satan is so good at his job at infiltrating the church mm -hmm. and you know you have preachers in the pulpit who you know the devil is so good at deception that mm -hmm. he'll have you believing that you are walking out your right. salvation you're telling you're, you're people the truth you're yeah. preaching the truth and all the time you are deceiving people yeah. and you know that's scary. That's scary. that is really scary it is and that's like i said i i, I I never take my salvation for granted. It, although I know that if I die right now where I'm going, I don't know if I don't continue in the Lord, abide in him the way the word says, a month from now I may die and not yep. go to heaven. We don't know how far God's grace is going to carry us. Could be tomorrow, could be today. We don't know. That's yeah. what I preach. That's one of the, you know, the the things, the first things I say, it just kind of comes, it's the Holy Spirit, right, working on me. So uh, when I came with the Dallas, um, after that initial opposition, and I just walked out in obedience, um, I have to I have to walk because I videotape uh, to share it, but also protection because you don't know who you're going to encounter on the yeah, street. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but I have to listen to myself because I honestly have, most time have no idea what I said. <laughs> I know what that's like. <laughs> I know exactly what that's like. Yes. I say, what do you talk about? Like, I don't know. We need to watch the video. <laughs> I don't have. I don't usually have that problem. Like if I'm doing uh, the remnant report because you know I have yeah. everything planned out, but. Yeah. Nine times out of ten, even though I will, you know, write out a sermon, I'll have a sermon planned. There are mm -hmm. so many times, literally nine times out of ten, I'll get to the pulpit and the Lord will change it. Yeah. <laughs> and when I'm finished, I couldn't tell you what I preached about. And you you can, know, I know exactly what you mean. The, the message is trustworthy. And I think for the people that struggle with faith, that, you know, the, the non-believers, whatever category you want to call them, um, they all, and, and myself, because I can remember being one of them. I, I used to be a Christ prosecutor, a persecutor of Christians. Like Paul, I uh, used to mock Christians, make fun of Christians, hate all things Jesus. Um, pride, you identified that. You know, how many steps in that direction do you need to take? How, how far do you need to get? Do you need to wander in a desert for 40 years and never make it to the promised land? Um, you know, and how many opportunities were they given to repent and, and really get themselves fully honest with the Lord? Um, you know, the, the ones that struggle with, with that, that first question of, is God real? Is Jesus real? You know? There has to come a point where they just uh, find something in the word, because it is the word, uh, that's trustworthy. When I believe that Jesus Christ is who they say he was, it was based on the word. It was, the to me, is, uh, the Bible gives a clear definition of faith. It's the substance of things hoped for, mm -hmm. but the evidence of things not seen. Amen. If somebody is having trouble, say like, um, you know, they have... Uh, initially believed in their heart you know the lord jesus mm -hmm. and or confessed with their mouth the lord jesus and believe in their heart that god has roasted him from the dead as the bible mm -hmm. says um and they are literally walking out their salvation they're doing everything that the bible says that jesus says but they're having trouble with these thoughts that are entering their mind god's not real if they continue um and persevere you know continue they can go their entire life with the enemy throwing those thoughts in their mind. But if they overcome that, mm -hmm. then, you know, they could die with that doubt in their mind. And in my opinion, you know, there's, they have walked out a life of righteousness and, you know, 
confessed and believed and in my opinion they would go to be with the lord yeah they're gonna have the holy spirit to testify you know yeah on who 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 christ knew and who he's gonna say i never knew you and sin should be something that um I don't want to say we're scared of sin, but we should fear the Lord <laughs> to the extent that sin just doesn't seem like a viable option for us. Absolutely. So. Like the opposite to what I just said. Uh, you know, you could have a, another person that believes 100% in that God is real, Jesus is real, but they do not do anything that the Bible says as far as uh, fruit goes. Right. Which one is saved? Yep. You know, which one has that salvation? The one that has the doubts but walks it out? Or yeah. the one that truly believes but does that but has no obedience. That's the faith without works that you know our big brother James yeah. can such a faith save a man. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Amen, brother. I mean, and people try to people don't realize what that says. When it says faith without works is dead, um, it doesn't really get any plainer than that. Uh, nope. if you have a dead faith, you're dead. <laughs> exactly. I wouldn't want to die with a dead faith. Nope. <laughs> And, you know, the book of James says a lot more than that about salvation and, um, you know, losing it. The book mm -hmm. of Hebrews as well, you know, um, yep. if we go back to sin after we have, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah there, there is no more sacrifice for sin. No more. Man. Yeah, but, that's... you know, I, I, I don't know if there is a believer who has not backslidden some. You know, we're all going to sin. Yep. I've told a lie probably in the past two weeks, not mm -hmm. intentionally, of course, and I'm not a liar, mm -hmm. but. I'll catch myself. Uh, you know, my son may ask me something that I don't want him to know, and I'll say no. Uh -uh. Lose your and temper. Have to repent. <laughs> be, be lose your patience with someone. You know, yeah. usually a, a family member. You gotta you gotta ask for forgiveness. You gotta say you know, um, prefer to God because He's the one you sinned against, and then to that person you wronged. Um, Absolutely. And that requires the opposite of pride, which is humility. That that requires you to uh, walk as a humble servant that Christ demonstrated us, that like gave us the example in him and then he gives us the way to do it and his by the holy spirit he gives us the helper um that will lead us into all understanding and um you know the the to ephesians uh, 6 where uh you talked about towards the end um where was i the the sword of the spirit which is the word of god mm -hmm. i mean it's right there if, if you have all this defensive stuff on but you have no sword yeah it's like we were talking about earlier. If you don't, if you don't have every bit of it, um, if you're missing any one of these or more, then that's a, a door open. You know, yep. It's just like if you are in a physical battle. If you leave yourself open to attack, mm -hmm. gonna, you know, they're going to penetrate your defense. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, we're we're running out of time. We're going to have to close yeah, really. it out. We've had a, an awesome uh, dialogue, and, and I really enjoy it having you on um in closing though i, I do want to say this uh, and we've already you know we've touched on this but ephesians 6 and the entire book of ephesians like we said before is literally a guide to having a healthy spiritual life yeah. and if you have a healthy spiritual life if you are literally doing the things that uh ephesians all of it that paul talks about You'll have on all of his armor, um, and if you if you've got your armor on, then you will be able to uh, quench the fiery darts of the wicked, and you'll be able to withstand in yep. the evil day. Yep. Um, Put on Christ. Amen. A absolutely. There's uh, one more thing though, um, because I've been battling with this. I will have to say, um, as much as I would love to say that I always have every bit of my armor on. You know, I've been battling with these problems. Obviously, I don't because I believe that at least on some level, this was spiritual. Right. And I believe that the, the biggest problem with me, I believe the door that I left open was my shield of faith. Right. Because I didn't believe that this was a spiritual attack, and I allowed myself – to do only the bare minimum. Amen. I started feeling sorry for myself, um, mm -hmm. which made me not read the word as much, and it affected my prayer life. You know, I, I there were days that the only time I prayed was when I said the blessing. Mm. I mean, that's as honest as I can be. Um, yeah. You know, Jesus, you, know. And, you, you almost sometimes I think you need those seasons just to because they're very uncomfortable. Yeah. 
You don't want to be there. No, I'm, <laughs> you don't I'm want to be there. I, I got to where I had disease when I, when I was at the end of this thing before, and I'm on the other side of it now, and I pray that I stay on the other side of it. But I had no quality of life. I mean, mm -hmm. literally no quality of life. I was miserable. Yep. And, and, and you're going to be miserable for everyone else around you, too. Yeah. I've been there, bro. And I've been there. Yeah. I, um, I had my wife had to actually snap me out of it uh, last year. And that's but I'm going to tell you this. As hard yep. as it was, I'm glad that it happened Amen. because I learned from it. Mm -hmm. And uh, One now, last thing to you I, on, on Ephesians 6 is you, you mentioned the beginning that leads to the armor of God. And actually, this I just got this today with you. And this is why it's really important for Christians to – for iron to sharpen iron, and I read I read that I read the armor of God. I, I had uh, you know my first wedding ring had the armor of God inscribed on it, and I just got this today, brother. So we're all students. Oh, um, absolutely. <laughs> after what Paul says uh, in verses twenty and twenty one, what is why? What's the purpose of it? Here Paul says, "For which I am an ambassador in bonds, mm -hmm. that therein I may speak boldly, as I ought to speak." And he he goes so that speaking boldly cannot be done yeah and then right. in verse 21 he says but that ye also may know my affairs and how i do and you know yep. so i was i was hiding it um and not coming out boldly letting people know my right. affairs which yep. is obviously right and i've, I've read ephesians 6 a million times too <laughs> and you know i, I know i yep. definitely didn't catch it until now um yep. but it never really applied to me as much until now but you yep. know i see um what I actually did tonight and, you know, with the church was obedience yeah. and what the Bible literally tells us to do right here in Ephesians 6. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, thank you for that because uh, I, I didn't see it until you said it. Yeah, I wouldn't have seen it until you, you invited me to this conversation. <laughs> Praise but God for I, that. Uh, so appreciate you coming on, brother. Uh, I um, hope that we can do this again. I really do. Uh, yeah. I've got just a couple of housekeeping things I got to do. I got some announcements to make about some events we got coming up, but I am going to let you go. And I appreciate you coming on so much, man. God Thank bless you. you. God bless you. God bless everyone listening. And like you said, endure. That's all we got to do. <laughs> Absolutely, brother. Grace God bless. and peace, man. Bye-bye.